Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf's weekly podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor. Connor's out sick today. Partied a little too hard at the Super Bowl last night. Yeah. Um, nah, I probably just had a bad sauce ball. Um, <laughs> but we got, we're going to kick it off with a Patreon question of the week. The All Star event is coming this weekend. We're going to do a little All Star event preview. Trevor's trivia. The Q series is officially announced, the Pro Tours qualification series. They also updated their end of season awards, and we're going to put in our predictions. For the MPO top 10 and FPO top 5 preseason, um, get the ball rolling with that. But first, quick word from our sponsors. 2024 is here and in full swing, and that means it's time for New Year's resolution check-in with our friends at Manscaped. Newsflash, it's never too late to level up your grooming game and keep yourself tamed. Manscaped's new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is every man's cheat code to look good, feel good, and turn the page on confidence this year. Whether you're going for a trim or that clean shave and look, this trimmer has got you covered. Trusted by over 10 million men worldwide, now is your time to get a grip on your grooming with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code GRIPLOCK for 20% off plus free shipping. Let me introduce the MVP of 2024, Manscaped's fifth generation lawnmower. It's not just a trimmer. It's your grooming sidekick. It's equipped with two skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. And did I mention it's waterproof because a trim in the shower is the only way to start the day. Let's face it. Resolutions might come and go, but a well-groomed you is here to stay thanks to Manscaped. So don't forget to get 20% off and free shipping with code GRIPLOCKED at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off free shipping code GRIPLOCKED. Embrace the new you and definitely embrace a new trimmer courtesy of Manscaped. So let's kick things off here with a Patreon question of the week. This comes from patreon.com slash foundation disc golf, our Heiser Club. We have a weekly Q&A podcast over there called the Heiser Club Mailbag. And um, this is one of the questions. I thought it was an interesting one. Uh, it was from Kent Bontrager. He said, hypothetical situation. The Pro Tour has banned baskets and needs an alternative catch device to use. What are you coming up with? Can't pick basketball hoops, but how sick would that be? It wouldn't be that sick. Oh, all. wow. Yeah, take that, Kent. Yeah, take that, Kent. Um, I don't know. The basket's perfect, right? It's the best. Are we allowed to use the basket? We can't use the basket design at all, or is it just, we just need to replace chains? Just an alternative catch device, however you want to take that. Mm, mm. What? Because I like, um, I think you had said, like, the idea of using a net that makes that was it a my idea. more yeah. one-sided yeah. is interesting. Because that would be like, I don't know, disc golfers already get so worked up about the idea of obstacles in the circle that don't let them putt from exactly where they landed conveniently. So imagine making the basket, you can only, it's like every, it's imagine every basket was in a spider tree where like there was only one spot you wanted to land. I mean, there'd be, there'd I thought it'd be, an, it'd be an interesting dynamic to the game. If you're like, well, if you go deep, you're just, you literally don't have a putt. I th think about this. Okay. Right now, um, disc golf is a game where you're basically the disc can drop into the basket, but basically you're scoring by getting the disc to land, like go into the basket horizontally. Right. Yeah. That's why people say, Oh, if it's an ACE, it was a bad shot. Yep. How about this? We take your net or whatever it is. And now the disc has to fall through it. Okay? So like a basketball hoop kind of not a basketball hoop though. Just think about it as a just net. Just like a that ring a with a hoop. net. It doesn't even have to have anything in it. It can just literally be a hula hoop. Okay, but the idea is you got to get it to drop in it. So now, just like golf, we have to get the object to go down into the target. So now an ace, if you threw a spike hyzer and it went in, that's the perfect What shot. about just a, a just basket, just take off the top apparatus? Like just the just the basket part. It's oh, just the cage. Yeah, that's just it. Dong. That's all it is. This is what Ken Climo wanted. More, more touch. touch. Need more touch. Needs more, more, needs more touch. It would be very interesting dynamic of like... Imagine what would putting look like. I think putting would look similar, but more on hyzer... Here, and like, here's an idea. Here's an idea. We just bury it, just a hole. It's like foot golf. Now we're talking. Just a hole in the ground. Games played on the ground now. You can throw more rollers, rollers, more sliders. Yeah. Back upside down disc just became the best shot ever. People, that might be how people putt. They might be sliding them like shuffleboard. Yeah, because then the <laughs> texture of the grass matters. I, yeah, you got to actually read greens now. There's break. Yeah, we're back. If, Putts have to stay in contact with the ground. Let's take it a step further. I don't know if we go that far. No, now we're. I like the idea of like you try to plop <laughs> one. Could you like if you're trying to plop it like cornhole style? If the if the the hole can't be too big, but if you're trying to <laughs> plop it cornhole style, like a 25 footer could be. It's just could be interesting. It's just crazy to think like whenever the disc golf was invented, obviously like all of the early disc golfers like they were so obsessed with the idea of the frisbee and how it flew that they were never going to make the game like this. But imagine if they had decided like. Okay, once you get in within the circle, the way you putt is by sliding the disc on the ground, kind of like golf. And like that's how our sport was. It was a big hole and you had to push it on the ground and get it to slide. And so like if you were playing in certain terrain, 
it would be super hard. You know you why have this to will never work? Green. This will never work because the basket market. The manufacturers yeah. will never let it happen. Big DGA will never They'll let, never it, let happen. it happen. Yeah. Well, because you don't need them anymore. How are they going to pay all those rookies? To, to install a course, all you would need is just some, dig a hole. some concrete. Or not even concrete. You just put a little post in the ground if you want. Post Malone and then a little dig a hole. It's true. No, yeah, it's... um. Instead of having to pay ten thousand dollars for baskets, it's a good thing that the the basket prices came down. It, like for now, you can very very affordingly. Uh, is that a word? Affordingly? Sure. Af- not a word. Not. Definitely not. You can uh, very easily stay on budget and and get a basket for like a reasonable price. But when I was first getting in, it wasn't necessarily that way. Especially if you wanted something brand name, and. There were already a number of people DIYing baskets because it's not rocket science. Yeah. It's a basket. Like if you, especially if you had any kind of welding background, you were really set. But um, the, how big the sport is now, if those baskets wouldn't have got more reasonable, imagine all those COVID boomers, like the DIY plans would have got too good. It would have shut things down. It would have been something. People would have just got too powerful. I was just hanging sheets uh, in my house to like, you'd hang a sheet and then like tie it off at the bottom and create a pocket. And that's what I used to put into before I had a basket. Yeah. I never did. I, I just set a pillow up on my bed. I did that one. I too. had a basket, but it was like nighttime. I don't want to go or too cold. Don't go outside, whatever it may be. Brody Smith. Um, yeah. I would just put into a pillow on my bed. Yeah. I used to do that. And I check something. You keep the people entertained. Yeah, no, I would be in my, uh, in my bedroom watching YouTube, uh, disc golf videos. Cause that was like basically my life. And I would throw like 10 foot putts into my pillow because that's all I had to test a new grip or whatever and think to myself like... You never missed. I just solved putting. Yeah. Like how I could... Pillow putting, I'm Ricky Wysocki. If you put a pillow up and I'm just hitting the pillow, I don't miss. Putting is so stupid because like if you... If Connor was sitting in that chair that he normally sits in right now, 20 feet, 15 feet away... I'm never missing him. I would never, ever, ever not hit like him. And he's not even as wide as a basket. Yeah. Putting is so stupid. Yeah, you got to take the brain out of putting. I hate it. <laughs> this upcoming weekend, we have our first taste of disc golf, the all-star event. Um, I, on, I'll be straight with you. I can't find a ton of information because when um, DGPT 2024 all-star, when they like came out with this, they were talking about like some people, and I'm sure this week is when we're going to find out this information, but they originally had said like there's going to be some people just doing distance, you know, some people doing like putting, like the skills challenge is not just going to be the team and the team is going to be more focused on, um, cause they're focused on individual prizes in each category, then doubles on Saturday, singles on Sunday. So like Friday is going to be more fun. You might have like double G or David Wiggins Jr. might show up to do like distance type stuff. Yeah. Can't find a ton of information on that now. Um, so what the format is that we're going to be basically judging this weekend on is basically they're going to play some type of doubles and singles. And that's that Um, because the instead of counting skills challenge towards the overall team point putting distance accuracy are separate exhibition events with small additional touring pros so like like those we don't have to factor that in this is just like head-to-head teams doubles singles is what we're looking at so we have for MPO team Isaac Isaac Robinson is the captain of that team. He has drafted Ezra Robinson Gannon Burr Cole Rodolin Kyle Klein and the goose Aaron Gossage, that's Team Ezra. Whereas Team Calvin, Calvin Heimberg, has drafted Ricky Wysocki, Matty O, Anthony Barella, James Proctor, and Chris Dickerson, who is filling in for Eagle McMahon, who is out, not due to injury in the like sense of he re-injured anything. He just was going to play lefty. Yeah. And basically was like, you know, this is a team event. As much fun as it would be, I don't want to hold the team back playing lefty. So I'm just going to wait and not and sit out. So... Not an additional injury, even Probably though he would have been is more out. inclined to watch if he would have. Yeah, him playing lefty is electric, but I understand what he's saying. Of like, I don't want to hold my team back because obviously him playing lefty is not going to be as good as Chris Dickerson. I like that they're doing the exhibition events the way they are because like it's fun to just bring in specialists. I think that's cool. Um, I think their best chance at making this really fun is you can't spread it out too much. Like if you're going to get people to tune in for all stars, they're not going to watch like multiple rounds. I feel like you need to do one 18 hole round and you cut down each team by one player and do collegiate doubles four on four collegiate doubles Two players. one round. Yeah. I that agree, would be, though. that would be super. I would 100% watch that because you can sell me for the all-star thing and every sport struggles with it. 
you can sell me on one round where everybody's playing in that round. So I can see every all-star on one card, basically. Yeah, just one thing. Um, you can sell me on that super easy. Whenever you spread it out and, like, in years past, you'd be like, okay, well, I got to watch. Do I want to, like, see these guys playing or these guys playing? Like, just try to make it into one product. I feel like that's the best thing you can do. And, like, I, I, yeah, that's what I'd like to see. The... I mean, I'm excited just because we're going to watch discs fly again. That's basically um, what the all-star they're, they, they, they basically, that's their biggest play is right. Is yeah. that we because you'll get to see golf. Gannon with disc mania, right? You know, you'll get to see, I don't know if anyone else on here moved. I don't think so. Ezra, Isaac, Ricky, Matt. No, no one else moved. Um, but Gannon with disc mania is the big draw. Obviously Eagle with MVP would have been a big draw, but you know, it's going to be a fun weekend to at least just watch some. And doubles always fun. Singles will just be regular disc golf. But what will be interesting is it will give us a little taste because, like, singles, somewhat competitive at a course the Pro Tour is at next yeah. weekend. That's the most interesting thing, honestly, is we're literally going to get a preview. And uh, these guys are going to have an advantage going into the first yeah, event of the year. Get like, a nice little, if nice you practice. didn't like Calvin Heinberg before, which you probably should have, it's the throw down the mountain course. If you didn't like him before, you got to like him after this weekend because yeah. he's going to have and Ricky's in a similar boat they're just going to have more experience under a tournament pressure on this Olympus yeah. disc golf oh, we haven't gotten property. any updates with the Palma Best situation we have not injury. I, that's what I'm curious about because like normally I would regardless of his injury I'd be like well he just had a kid probably maybe start the tour a little bit later but like it's at his course it's here yeah so I would feel like that's an event he'd want to play if he could I just haven't heard anything about that either way no so <laughs> with the doubles and singles which team are we liking here for the all-star weekend? Honestly, I looked at it like, cause I knew we would talk about this and I was just like, if you really sit here, maybe somebody has deeper analytics and, but like, if you really sit there and like, try to tell me that one team is significantly better than the other, then like you're crazy. I think I <laughs> test as a coin toss. I test. It makes you immediately go, Oh, red team's going to dominate. Yeah, because but you read Calvin and Ricky right off the bat. That's what I'm saying. You read Calvin, Ricky, Matteo, A.B., yeah. James Proctor, Dickerson. But Gannon Burr but and Isaac won that's the as thing, many you, events probably last if year. If you look at it, it's like the forgettable all-stars are over on blue team. Yeah. Like Cole Rodolin is filthy. Well, you got he won some, Ledstone. Yeah, you got some, you got Gannon some Burr is arguable, could be argued as the best player in the world. Well, I think Ezra and, and Gossage are the two most underrated players on tour. Exactly. And then Kyle Klein, reigning U.S. champ. Yeah. Isaac Robinson two-time major champ last year you have three of the four majors on yeah. one card you got one team that can win majors and another team that can't you know except dickerson you know leave him out of this i guess yeah but. that's fair that's a fair <laughs> statement there um but i feel like a lot of people were commenting on facebook and stuff and just like i mean the red team's gonna dominate that's that's but crazy it's just the talk. name recognition <laughs> yeah that's is crazy because like i was also we were talking about it a little bit this morning and i was like to be honest with you i feel like the all-star event would mean more to the blue team because you have some of the underrated guys that like yeah. a good performance here like Cole Rodolin, Ezra, Aaron Gossage like I feel like they're more likely to take the pro to the all-star event seriously than the established names of like Calvin, Ricky, Matteo, AB. Here's the thing you could take the top 12 players in the world right now and <laughs> or arrange them in any arrangement possible and it's still a coin toss yeah like you could take six through 12 versus one through six yeah one through six is a better team but it's disc golf six through 12 is still really good and they could also win like it, so you got to pick now though who, who am I riding with? Yeah. Team Blue. Team yeah, Blue. I'm riding with Team I Blue. Think, I think Team Blue takes it down. I legitimately like Team Blue better. Like, that's just that's actually the how only, I feel. The only tough part is I do think Calvin and Ricky are going to be better than Isaac and Gannon at the Olympus course. Maybe. But I do, I mean, Kyle Klein could pop up. I think it's going to be a coin toss, but I'm, I'm agreeing. I think Team Blue takes it down because I think they're going to care more. Yeah, Isn't that's. I think they're skill wise both pretty How close. How do you want it? More. Is there bonuses? What do they get for this? I think there's a little bit of bonuses. Yeah, mm. I don't know the official thing, but um, now on FPO we have Team Own Scoggins, which consists of <laughs> I Kat seen Merch. These yet. So this is first reaction for me. Cat Merch, Henna Blomrus, Haley King, Jessica Weiss, and Macy Valadez. Okay, that team's pretty dirty. And then you have Team Missy, which consists of Missy Gannon, Holland Handley, Katrina Allen, Sarah Hokum. Ella Hansen, Ali Smith. Mm. It's another really it's tough a toss one. Up. It's a toss up. It's a similar thing where I feel like Red Team has almost the bigger names in a certain sense. But well, like, let's go head to head. Okay. Okay. Missy, Gannon, and Missy, own. coin toss. Yeah. Cat and Holland, 
Probably slight edge to Holland. I would agree. But close. Henna Blomry and Henna. Cat. I mean, they're the same player. Yeah, but Henna's way more useful because in doubles, she's just a, she does a, an absolute yeah. masher. Haley is better than, than Sarah Hocum. Yeah. Uh, Ella I would versus say Jessica Ella Lees. is better than Jessica, and Allie's better than, than Macy. So probably slight edge red team. Slight edge. I want to well, say slight edge red team. If Kat is like playing competently, red team wins. If if she's not, she, I'll just put it on her. That's fair. If Kat plays well, red team wins. If Kat doesn't play well, blue team wins. It's that simple. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm going team red, though. It's really close. I'm riding team blue. I'm going to go with team blue. Team blue all the way. Now, I don't know if these are the doubles partners. Because, like, Haley King and Henna Blomers, I would not pair together. No, you would, put, I would you split put Henna them. and Own together. And, and like, yeah, I would yeah, I would split Kat it up differently. So, I don't know if this is the doubles partners or if they have decided that yet. But I'm, I'm going to go with team blue here. I'm a here. little bit bummed out that Jessica Weiss and Kat didn't get drafted on the same team. Although, I guess I could argue that I'm, I'm happy they're not. Cause yeah. There's like that's like one of the only rivalries that exists in disc golf. So, got to really true. latch on to them. Oh yeah, um, but should we try and speak a rivalry into existence nope, this year? We shouldn't. Probably not. Probably a bad idea. I'm gonna speak one. I wish not like with bad blood. Just like I'm gonna say like these two players okay. need to have a rivalry this year. I'm gonna say. Actually, I'll make it even easier. Maybe I'll maybe I will go into something. I'd like Kristen and Paige rivalry to reignite. I'm going to think about it. And I'll get back to you with okay. my official. Stay tuned. End of this episode, you're gonna have my official rivalry announcement for 2024. I think mine's gonna be Kristen v. Page. That Page already, is our that redemption. already kind of exists, though. I'm yeah. gonna make one out of. Thin you want air. just a thin air? It's one. gonna come out of thin air. Okay. Well, that's. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do wish Kristen was playing. I also do wish Page was playing. Uh, Kristen starting her season at Waco. I don't know if we've heard when Page is starting hers. I don't I know if she posted think her tour schedule. She might have, or may I saw Eagles the other day. Let me see if Paige Pierce posted her tour schedule yet. Pierce, 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 Pierce. Career wins. Doesn't look like Stats. It. I'm not seeing it unless she put it in a description. It doesn't look like she like made a graphic post. Yeah. With it. So I don't know exactly mm -hmm. when Paige is planning to start um, her touring year. But it'll be interesting to see. Interesting to watch. And All-Star Weekend, you can tune in this weekend on the Disc Golf Network and watch some discs fly. Watch some Frisbees fly see some people with their new sponsor now before we get into trevor's trivia i want to take this time to remind everyone next week make sure the thing's on are you next listening week, are you listening grip locked is moving to the grip locked channel the links in the description down below make sure you're subscribed there because next monday the all-star recap and next week on thursday i believe we will have the first grip locked preview show new for this year grip locked preview show for the chess.com invitational is all going down next week. That's going to be on Griplock's new channel. This is the last time you can watch us on the Foundation Podcast channel. We're moving to the Griplock channel next week. Make sure you're tuned in over there so you don't miss out. Audio listeners, you don't have to do anything. Audio's not going anywhere. It's going to be in the exact same feed, all that. But YouTube peeps, head over to Griplock's new channel. All right, Trevor's Trivia, what we got today? We are going to do some Who Am I's today. Who are you? So I've got who, who, an MPO who, who, and an FPO. I'm going to give you the clues. Okay. I'll give you all the clues. I mean, unless you think you can just nail it. But I like it. None of the clues are like dead giveaway, I feel like. So okay. um, we'll see see how you do. So we'll start with the um, with the MPO player. Okay. Matty I'm, just kidding. Dang it. <laughs> um, I'm from Austin, Texas. I've been a PDJ member since 2007. I have $243,000 in career earnings. Last season, I had three top fives on tour, one of those at a major, and I also made $44,000 last season. Uh, I also won on the Euro Tour last year. I have two career pro tour victories. My last was in 2022. I've been with the same manufacturer since 2008, and I just signed a new extension. Who am I? From Austin, Texas. Keep in mind that the Frums are based on the PDGA yeah. website. So sometimes they're not completely accurate, but they won a Euro tour event last year. That should really narrow it down, but it doesn't. <laughs> Those ones kind of blend into memory. They last pro tour was 2022. You said correct. So they didn't win at all last year. Been with the same manufacturer for <sighs> like 16 years. 
16 year gosh i don't know any texas guys i don't think then because like texas i immediately think mason ford emerson keith and they've obviously jumped around a bunch they just signed an extension this off season with their guy with their manufacturer is that what you said yeah through 2026 they signed a multi-year extension with their manufacturer <laughs> I mean, I don't even have the faintest clue right now. Who won a Euro Tour event this past year? That's probably your biggest hint. I think you can arrive at that. You can do it. It was. I don't I remember the Euro was the Tour Crocol events. Open. Who won the Crocol Open? Think about who is over there. That's what I'm trying to go through. I will. A B Corey Ellis Paul. A B was over in Europe. The European well, Open. He's there for the European Open, but he, I didn't know he played any. Of the Euro I don't know Tours. he played European. I didn't watch the European events. <laughs> I saw Paul won with Sula. Was yeah. Crocol a full pro tour? No. It's just like a silver event? Because um, if it was a full pro no, tour. No, yeah, it was a Euro tour, like one of the... But so like, it was like a silver that, event. I believe this guy beat Paul. Joey Tamale? No, because he <laughs> made way too much. He said beat Paul. There's only... He, he it came to my mind he first. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I give up. Nothing. I, don't, wow. I can't. The Texas is holding me back. I'll try to give you another hint. The win, that what he won in 2022 was the Preserve. Nico LaCastro? No. Nico didn't win the preserve. Nico won the preserve once. Yeah, when was that? I think it was. Is like, it, well, it can't be Ricky Wysocki. He won the preserve once. Bradley Williams. There it is. Bradley yeah, I would not Williams. got that. I would never got there. Do you remember that he was. The, I he forgot he was from that Texas. Euro That's what hurt year. me. That, I forgot he was from Texas. That was. A, the, I, for some reason, I associated him with Carolina. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't think he's ever lived in Carolina. He's a Texas guy through and through. Okay. Just completely forgot. Gotcha I forgot one. he existed. There you go. That's a tough one. Be will. Um, Sorry, Bradley. Okay, FPO player. Okay. From Grass Valley, California. Petey. Jessica Wees. That's correct. Yeah. How did you know that? Don't know. Just That was in my head somewhere. It was deep in there. You just awoke some type of memory that I don't know. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. Why well, that made up for my MPO. <laughs> yeah, why did you know that? I just knew she was from Grass Valley because something, something stuck out with Grass Valley that I was like, I don't know how many other pros are from there. I, I think I don't know. Okay, that was just a, that was one of those like just a. Deep and they part. say that we don't know FPO. That was just a deep part of my mind. You try to tell us we don't know FPO. He, we know where every single Greg, players from. Greg Barzi might be from there too. I thought that Nico was he he was in that area. Well, I guess that makes sense because they dated. I think. <laughs> yeah, Greg Barzi from Grass Valley too. No, oh. so they, are we going to say Grass Valley is the new capital? I think there's something with Grass Valley. Like I think there's been a lot of pros that came out of there or something. Where is Grass Valley? California. <laughs> Duh. Yes. Um. But where? no, maybe not. We just got Greg Barsby. He's is, the highest uh, rated. Yeah, I don't know. Grass Valley, California. I want to know like what area of California it's in. If my maps would load. Hello. And Jessica Weiss is a high. So I have no idea why I knew that. That is bizarre. But for some reason, I knew Greg Barsby and Jessica Weiss were both from Grass Valley, California. So when you said I mean, it, I just I knew it. Yeah, I'm impressed. I feel better because I screwed the MPO one. So. Yeah, you made up for it. I made I, up I'm for it. To, okay, here we go. This is somebody show me where this is in the maps. I, just, I think it's SoCal. I would imagine, right? Okay, here it is. Grass Valley is. No, it's actually not. It's actually north of Sacramento. So it's quite hmm. it's quite north. Yeah. Interesting. How about it? You learn something new every day. I got my rivalry, by the way. Oh. Aaron Gossage and Cole Radon. Can't stand each other. They're too nice. Oh, They're too nice of guys. Oh, that's the thing about them is on the I surface, agree, they're like, such nice guys. They're such nice guys on the surface, but they can't stand I, each other. I agree, career path wise, I could see a rivalry budding, but they're too nice. They just can't stand each That's other. That's just though. not true. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I just try. remember I was talking to Cole the other day, and he was like, "Dude, That's if there's true. anybody, these are all lies." Trevor is lying with it every is word. Aaron right now. Gossage, and then the other other day, I was talking to Aaron Gossage. He's like, "Dude, Colbert on is a punk." So you should have picked like at least a someone who's got like they like they. I don't think they could dislike anyone on. They can't stand each other. All right. Oh, just the sight of one another. And listen, if you're listening to this, either one of you, you have two choices right now. You can come out and deny the rumors or you can make profit off of them. <laughs> so that's up to you. The merch, I'll facilitate a pay-per-view fight. Whatever you want to do, I'm open. So the Pro Tour announced four days ago they've officially launched the Q Series. We knew this was coming. It's a new path towards Tour Card Qualification. 
Pro Tour is thrilled to introduce the 2024 Qualifying Series, Q Series, Qualifying Circuit, designed to offer FPO and MPO competitors a new pathway to earn their place at the 2025 Tour. PDG, the Pro Tour, sorry, the DGPT will award six MPO and four FPO Tour cards based on the results of the Q Series. The inaugural Q Series um, schedule feature multiple PJ8 tiers across the United States, culminating in a November finale in the Southeast location, which will be announced soon. Here's the initial slate. More might come later. Now, what's interesting is they said they're awarding six tour cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. But then it looks like first through eighth get you a tour card. Oh, silver card. There's tour cards and silver cards. That's the detail I missed. Never mind. Never mind. I'm stupid. He's so, stupid. It'll start in May. It goes everywhere from Colorado to Texas to Washington to Utah to Missouri to Michigan to Canada south carolina and then the finals in the southeast um this is essentially obviously we removed the silver events they're still european silver events but removed the silver events they kept the silver logo for the q series i love it I, this is what i always wanted the silver events to be it makes perfect sense it doesn't so i think tour card holders can play in q series events but they won't earn q series points right so there's they basically just like if it fits into this tour schedule, which I don't think any of them really do, but if it fit into the tour schedule, like you could play just for some extra cash like or something. It. Yeah, it's exciting. I think it, it's interesting. Um, the biggest thing that sticks out is the schedule. Obviously, it's pretty heavy, like out west in that direction. I mean, you've got a couple West Coast events and then um, just some like Midwest, and they only really come to the East Coast for two events at the end one and then the finale. And so, but I think the more I've thought about this, it's like nobody is really going to be, nobody across the country is going to be able to tour this. Like there'll be a few that probably do, but like most people are not going to tour it. What this is really more than a tour is it is tryouts. And I think they, they want to get as many people a chance to play in this as possible, no matter where you live in the country. I think that's how you should do it. You should try and spread out as much as possible. And it looks like that's what they're doing for the most part. And so because of that, I think the model here is like, you don't, you're not hopping on the Q series to like play multiple events, try and get in that way. Like it's a tryout. You're going to go to a Q series event and you're going to try and make it from that Q series to the finale or get your card. Like that's really what this looks like from the outside looking in because like they can't really, they can't have enough events to like be proportional really no i wish there was a that might develop yeah i wish there were more on the east coast but like i think that's the best way to perceive they did it say now more might be added yeah i think i think they're trying to to structure it where like if someone wanted to tour they could i right. think it's how they're trying to, i say that but then there's an event in texas and then five days later an event yeah, in washington so not, maybe not i, I think there it, it is i think it, it's like at least the map is in their head a little bit because eventually they'd want the q series to be its own tour yeah. Once the pro tour has like way more money, <laughs> years, and years, years and years and years, years. but you got to start it somewhere. Yeah, I think um, right now these are like, don't think of it as a tour or even a series because that's the thing is like, there's not a lot of like, you won't see that many repeat players because of how spaced out these events. Think about them as individual tryouts. Uh, and it's a little easier to digest the most of the naming in the structure is their future plan. Like you were saying, like, I think that's what they want it to become. But for right now, it's going to be like they're holding these tryout events all across the country and even into Canada. Uh, and that's what it is. And yeah. like most guys that get in are going to go to an event, win it or finish really high and then maybe make the trip. Like I'll be like how many guys that finish top three or whatever on the West coast are going to be able to make it all the way over to South Carolina. It'll be interesting you to know, see. that's going to be interesting to follow, but it's cool because it'll give us some new storylines and yeah. like it, there's a very clear path to the tour, which is always cool. Um, so yeah, I think it'd be fun. I like the, the Q series is just fun to say like, Oh, you're playing the Q event. They I need mean, to get sponsored by Quiznos. That'd be nice. They, I mean, they, they kind of took it from like, like in golf, they, you have Q school, uh, like that's a thing, but you know, it just stands for qualifying and I want Q series merch. Yeah. I'll be not? the first to say it. I want so, the Q. Jeff Spring said our goal with the Q series is to provide an additional merit based path to the tour car qualification for upcoming players by inviting competitors who fell just shy of earning their tour card via the world standings. We aim to increase the level of competition at the finale and provide one additional opportunity for up-and-coming players on tour to earn a tour card instead of applying for an ex exemption. Yeah. So in addition to awarding full tour card access, they will also grant silver tour cards, partial tour access to regular season Q-Series event winners, 
and qualify said champions for one future Pro Tour event of their choosing. Tour card access will be granted based on the following achievements. So there's three different ways to earn your Tour card. Number one is placing the top two or top three MPO in the Q Series point standings after the Q Series finale. So that does favor someone who does play multiple events. You know, because you end in the top three after it's all said and done, Tour card. Placing first or second in FPO or placing first, second, or third in MPO at the Q Series finale earns you your Tour card. Mm -hmm. So those are the people who can earn the Tour card. To earn your Silver card, you can place third through fifth at the FPO at the Q Series finale, fourth through eighth in MPO at the Q Series finale, or win a regular Q Series event. So those get you kind of semi-exemptions, yeah. but not a full Tour card. That's the funny thing, too. Now that I think about this, too, is like, like I was saying, there is a couple events over there on the West, which I think is odd to people because the tour's not really going over there. Because, like, remind me, there's one in Washington, Ogden. Washington and Utah, Missouri, but that's not really West. So there's two over there there's in the West, there. and then there's some in the Midwest. Uh, but really, because of, like I was saying, how hard it could be for somebody to qualify for the finale but then fly across the country, you know, that's a huge commitment. Really, the biggest advantage is to those who live in the southeastern U.S. because they're going to get to play an event and then be very close to where the finale is if they place well. Yeah. So as much as there are a lot of events spread out, the the, the probably the players are the highest chance uh, of at least having an easy way to get themselves to the finale are those that are going to be playing the event right beforehand. Well, I mean, realistically, if you're a player who's playing in these Q Series events with your end goal being I want to tour next year, you're, you're, you're and, making the trip. Yeah, if you because are, if you're in a life position, you're ready to commit to full right. touring the next year. You're willing to. That's commit the most to go interesting the part. Country. They should like take a survey at these things. I want to know how many people. Uh, I think it's really cool that the pro tour, like I'm, I'm really proud of what they've been able to do and establish these things. I think they're on such a cool path for what they're doing. Um, and it's, it's crazy to see how quickly things are tightening up, how much harder it is already to get on tour and play in these tour events, which is, which is great. Uh, but I want to know like how many players that go to these Q events. Cause like we want to go to one yeah. just because like that Why would not? be fun. Yeah. But like realistically, you know, if I were if I were just a local Joe Schmo and I decided I want to play one of these events just because it's going to be really cool and there's going to be a lot of good players there, that doesn't mean I'm committed to go play on tour. Yeah. So how many guys? A, like, are we going to see a couple guys who stumble onto tour cards and then to proceed to not play any tour events the next year uh, because they just like play really well and win and be like, I don't want to travel. I got a family. Like, yeah. Or like, how many players are actually going there, being like, if I win this, it's my sign. I'm going on tour. Like, if I get this card, I'm making it happen. You know, I think it... be an interesting Because what, what, what you're also going to see is it was basically in there talking about, like, only X amount of people on the current tour are earning their tour cards. Right. People below that can play in Q-Series events, and as long as you're not a tour card holder for 2025 already, mm -hmm. you can earn points. So some of the stuff you might see is someone who, like, has been on tour for a while but isn't earning their tour yeah. card... And it's like, this is my fight to stay on That's going to be one of the fun things to track is players that are notable that lose their card, watching them the next year, trying to get it quickly back. Because like, and the crazy thing is like, you got to still wait out, sit out the season. Like if you earn your card, yeah, it's you'll be able to, you can probably get some exemption sponsorship and stuff, but yeah, there, there might be a lot of big events. Imagine if miss. they let you in as soon as you got it. So you'd have this scenario where like, let's just throw out a name. Uh, let's just say, um. Let's just pick someone who wouldn't be. Calvin yeah, let's Heimberg. just pick a world where a guy, a guy who, let's just say a person who has been playing disc golf for a long time, that's been their living, and then they just kind of drop out one year and lose their tour card. Imagine if they let you in as soon as you get it back. So, like, they're playing these Q's, these Q series events, like, knowing that as soon as they win, they could hop back on the tour. <laughs> like, they need it. They're like, no, I can't sit out another week. Electric. That would be crazy. But I do think there's, <laughs> from people that I've just, like, followed on social media, um, just in the disc golf world, there is a lot more interest in touring because the money's getting more realistic Yeah. to where like, sure, not everyone's getting fat paychecks, but you see mm -hmm. the top guys are making like really good living and you see a lot more guys are making comfortable livings Yeah. to where like, it's intriguing a lot more people than it used to be like, Hey, you're going to have fun and live in your van, but you're going to be eating rice and beans I and think, beans and rice. I, yeah. I think the biggest challenge with touring disc golf now is because like if you're a young guy especially if you're not going to go to college like if you want to if you're just like a, get out of high school and you want to give it a shot i think like if you're a talented disc golfer go for it right like if you especially if you can earn that card get out and do it because there is a chance that you can that you can do well for yourself the hardest part 
about the disc golf touring model now is knowing when it's time to hang them up. Yes. Like you, let's say you get into it, even if you're on the tour and this might change, like eventually like the goal. And I think we will reach this is that if you have one of those tour cards, you are making a living. Yeah. Like that just means that you like, I mean the PGA tour just for having your card, you make like 500 K it's their minimum. They've yeah. negotiated that, which is awesome. Um, their expenses are crazy, but like still, and there's also some events on the PGA tour that don't have a uh, cut. So everybody Everyone makes money, yeah. which is really cool. But, um, I, the hardest thing is being an 18 year old. Let's say you tour for four or five years. You start to get into your twenties a little bit. Okay. I still don't have any work experience. This has kind of been my whole life. Um, and it's just not really working out. That's when it becomes a really challenging decision. But if you're really talented and you're young, like, yeah, if you can get on that tour, do it. Like before it was kind of like, well, here's what it's going to be. It's yeah. going to suck. But, but now it's like, if you can play on the tour, like you should at least give it a season. Yeah. Well, I think that's the, the goal here is definitely to get down the line where you might be able to make an okay living playing on the Q series yeah. tour or Q tour. Yeah. Q series kind of like the corn fairy tour or web.com yeah. tour. I don't know what it's called nowadays. Is it just, is, uh, it's right now fairy? it's the web it's web. Or it's the corn fairy the corn fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, all, like you can make a, a decent living on that, like enough to where, you know, you're doing just fine. Yeah. Um, I'd like to and know. then you have a chance though, you know, if I get that tour card, I'm making a living. Right. Like that's the point where I think it eventually wants to get. Um, but it'll definitely create more interesting storylines because even mm -hmm. like a guy who gets their silver card, right, by winning a pro to, uh, yeah. so Q series event and the next year they get to pick their event, then it's right. like if they play well there, they could earn their tour card that way. And yeah. that's going to be an exciting storyline when they get there. Um, and then exemptions will also become important of like, you know, if you win Champions Cup, you get an exemption for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. To where people you have... You could have pros like a Philo Brathwaite, right? Where he isn't winning on tour right now. You know, he might be one of the guys who could be on the bubble at the end of the day, tour yeah. card wise. But it's like if he won Beaver State, let's just say he won Beaver State this upcoming year, that might earn him a qualification, a like exemption for four tour events. Right. To where he's on tour, he you're gonna yeah. see his presence for the, even if he doesn't have a tour card for right. the next few years. Yeah, the goal is you know get the purses big enough and get those payouts big enough that. It, just earning exemptions is a way to like to, to get yourself some money because like how many tour cards do we know how many tour cards there are right now the i can tell you okay. i think um i had a look because i was just looking into like right now obviously players can make money many other ways than just earnings but the easiest way for us to track them is earnings because if you can make your money just the way you're playing that's very that's a very so right now to top 45 fpo and top 90 mpo is 90 and the 2024 world standings will automatically earn 2025 tour cards right so it's so a 90 mpo so like brody smith for example he last year you would say he was like a top 50 well well that's not even true last year on the pro tour standings wise he was like a top 35 player yeah like he, he was, was getting, uh, maybe not 35, uh, but top he, was, 40. he was getting close. Yeah. There was he, like an there outside were, chance. A lot of the season, it. he was right on the bubble. Yeah. Um, and he only made $10,000 earnings last year. Yeah. So right now, if you want to be, let's, let's look, look at Ezra Robinson. Well, he look at you. Ninth. You lose like last end of the tour finale. Yeah. Good idea. Um, so he was like at the bubble. Because seconds. the kind of the metric you're look you want to look for to really see how sustainable touring is, is like, if I can just finish top half of the tour or top three quarters, can I make a living off of just what I earn from the tournaments? Um, so Paul Yulabari last year, because he was, yeah, he was like last into the tour championship. He made 17,000, which not like we, you cut, we want to see basically what I'm, what I'm, you kinda, want that number to be at least to, like 30. We want it to double basically. Yeah. If Cause you, at 30, then you factor in, you're getting at least a tour series disc. Like yeah. you, that person, which Yuli obviously is making a completely fine living disc. Yeah. Off. But if that Yulabari, if that was Alden Harris, right. for instance, where they don't have an established name, they don't have established like captain of Discraft, they don't have a long history resume. Jomez commentary gig. Yeah, you want that, that person yeah. to still be able to come back on tour next year. Right. Yeah, that that's so like that's where it's kind of at right now is like just based on earnings. And there are a lot of like the, the top players top make, players are making they good make living. solid livings just on their earnings. I mean, I remember um times where the best player in the world you know, could only make like 60 grand on earnings if they dominated. And now like, I, th I mean, Missy Gannon last year, she made a killing. <laughs> Kristen made more. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. Kristen made six figures. So but Ezra, she wins every single event. So. Ezra Robinson 
made thirty eight thousand. He made almost thirty nine thousand last year. How is that possible? He was nineteenth in the world last year. He, I mean, he played off tour events. He won a silver. Um, the most money he made in an event was six grand at the Pro Tour Championship, forty five hundred at Ledgestone, three thousand at True Bank. He won an eight tier for three thousand dollars. That's insane. Good for two thousand at Worlds. Yeah, he, so, he just had some, yeah, some decent I would cash. say right now, like, so top 20. He only, it, the key is he only missed cash on tour twice, USDGC yeah. and Music City. Well, you should look up Alden because apparently he didn't miss cash at all last year. Because if, you, if you're, like, top 20 right now, you can you can make that living uh, just off of the your 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 earnings. Alden here is $35,000, yeah, so a little cash. less than Ezra. Consistency pays. That just shows you. Yeah. But, like, 35000 like, yes, is that when you're factoring touring expenses, is that a loan covering you being on the road? You might break even on thirty five thousand. Live on it. Yeah, uh, live on it. Especially when you got guys that they now, split yeah, if hotel rooms. If you're splitting hotel rooms and you're living very cheap, yeah. Because the other thing you have to factor is these events are expensive. I think they're like three hundred plus dollars to register per one. So Not for these guys. Um. Yeah. If you're if you're I'm saying if you don't have because Alden Harris you know has YouTube and he has he's a big enough player to have good sponsorship where he should have a guaranteed of some type. But if you're a guy who like your entry fee is not covered. You got to finish to get bonuses and like you're not getting guaranteed money. Yeah. 35,000. You better hope you got a few bonuses in there. Yeah. That's going to be tight, but there you go. That's, that's a kind of where disc golf's at right now. It's better than it used to be. Checking that's in with disc for. golf. Um, 2024 end of season awards and qualification rules have been announced. Nothing too exciting to go into depth here with um just a few things to point out first off the community champion award has been is a new award which is going to recognize one fpo and one mpo player for their commitment to growing the sport and positively impacting their community they also updated uh which competitors are considered rookies so a player's rookie season is defined as a season in which they meet any one of the following criteria begin the season as a disc golf pro tour car, pro tour tour card holder for the first time or play six or more Pro Tour World Standing Points events in a single season or complete their 10th Pro Tour World Standing Point event overall or qualify for the Pro Tour Championship. That will set them as a rookie. That's their rookie year. So oh, much I stuff. like that because then um, players who have like played a Pro Tour event here and there, you know, but this is their first time touring. It yeah. doesn't eliminate them. They're getting better at the whole rookie thing. Yeah. <laughs> I like, you know, if you earned if you earned a tour card then it doesn't matter how many times you're about to play your this is your rookie year mm -hmm. makes sense six or more in a season makes sense so I, I like that i like all of those um player of the year is going to be determined from 33 percent media vote 33 percent world standings 33 percent tour card holder vote rookie of the year 33 percent media vote 33 percent world standings 33 percent tour card holder vote um first card all stars top four automatically awarded second and third stars media vote world standings fan vote 33 percent across there and then comeback player of the year is 50 50 between media and fan vote most improved players 33 percent media 33 percent tour card 33 percent fan and community champions 100 percent tour card nomination and vote tour card player so that's how the end of season stuff's going to work for the pro tour this upcoming year like i said not a huge storyline but just something it was news so i talked about it it was news all right we're going to do our predictions for the top 10 um this this is basically like how do we think the season's about to go where do we who do we think will be the top 10 players come the end of the year is yeah. essentially how this is going to work going into the off season our power rankings so like if, if we would have nailed our predictions right last year this is what it would have been we had Ian mcmahon one calvin heimberg two isaac robinson three gannon burr four kyle klein five ricky six maddie o seven simon eight cole Riddell and nine chris dickerson ten now, coming into this year, obviously, Eagle is in that number one spot because with the injury, he's not going to be back for till Champions Cup, I believe. We don't really know what, what is going on. Ghost but, number one. So he's a ghost number one spot. <laughs> but beyond that, you know, the list would basically be the same ending last year going into this year because there's not that much to, to learn in the offseason. But that's not what we're doing. We're predicting what do we think the end of year top 10 is going to be. It's just so weird going into these seasons and, like, not really thinking about Paul Macbeth. It is interesting. It's like, is this what going to be like when LeBron's gone? But like, I already kind of started to transition, I guess. It is crazy watching LeBron dunk with gray hairs in his beard. He's old. He's yeah. old. He's something. But he still looks like he could play three more, three more years. If, uh, he For like, 
a burst, he is at the, as athletic as ever. It's just that he wears on you. Yeah, can't I mean, play, he's like, he's like can't play forty minutes. I think he had thirty nine, maybe thirty nine. Yeah. Goodness. Um. All right. How do you want to do this? Do you want to like just go back and forth, or I'll we'll just go down the line. Maybe go down the line. Okay. Do we go ten to ten to one or one to ten? Ten to one. Ten to one. Can we go one to ten? Yes. Ten to one might break my brain. Okay. Let's go one to ten. I, uh, that that's, feels more digestible. That's true because you're going off the dome. I'm going off the dome here. So yeah, that, that would be difficult. Just ten, I'd be like get up to one, and be like, ah, I forgot that person existed. Can I go back? All right. End of year. Who do we think is going to be the number one best player in the world come the end of the season? Um, ah, this is tough. I want Gannon Burr. I think he's going to play very Denon. well with a Discmania bag. I'm going to go with Ricky Wise. Wow, I did not see that coming for Big Trev. Yep. I have you a have a feeling, feeling this is his Rick. year. I really do. All right, number number two, I like Calvin. I don't see Calvin going anywhere. Um, and I, I see him up there. Calvin, number two for me. Calvin, number two for Big Trev. I'll let you go third now. I have Gannon, third. Okay, so. I do believe in him, yeah. <sighs> you know what? I'm trying to decide. I believe less in Ricky than you do. Okay. Um, Haters. I do believe in Isaac Robinson, though. Mm. And I think especially end of the year, there's going to be some end of the season bias because we're going to come back. Well, to he's going to win Champions Cup in April, and it's going to take so long. Yeah, I like him for Worlds, too. Yeah. I think uh, he's going to play good at Worlds. Good at Worlds. So I, I like Isaac for, for my three he's spot. He's my number four. He's Trevor's number four. Yeah. Isaac Robinson. Uh, my number four, I'm gonna go. I'm just trying to decide. I think I like Ricky at five. Okay. Is where I where I think I like Ricky. End of season's tough because it's all factored on like is Eagle McMahon going to come back as the mm. Eagle of yeah. past? I think yes. I like Eagle McMahon four. You think yes? I trust the surgery. You trust the surgery. Uh, my number five is somebody that always ends up in the middle. Matty O. I think he gets one win this year. That's enough to keep him there, and that's where he ends up. My number five is Ricky Wysocki. Um, I think he's going to be a top five guy. He's going to stay relevant in all the events. He's probably going to pick up a win or two, but um, I don't know. I like him at five. I like nice him at five. There. Nice in there. Um, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and take six. Okay. I'll jump back in here. This is going to be my sleeper. Okay, I might Ooh. regret this, but I want Ezra Robinson. Yeah, no, I like that. I mean... I'm picking him over some very, very good players. Pretty big leap, though, yeah. But I do. I think he could. I think he could push for a win or two this year. Um, I think if he does that, I mean, he could be higher than six. We could. How crazy would it be if we saw a brother one two, Isaac Ezra one two in the first ever? I don't think it's gonna happen, but it'd be crazy. Could. Um, I've got Eagle McMahon in my sixth spot. It's very fair. For my seventh spot, I'm going with Kyle Klein. I think I have to have him up in there somewhere. That might have I might have robbed him, but uh, I also have him. You at also seven. have it. Seven. He goes quiet for long stretches, but then he'll do something. He, he will though. Yeah, I think he'll sneak in there. All right, who's your eight? Uh, number eight, Anthony Barella. I think he finally wins this year. It just something has to happen, right? <laughs> um, for my eighth spot, I've got a few good guys that I'm thinking through here. I like Simon Lazat. I like him. He's my nine. He is your nine. Yep. All right. Nine for Simon. And I'm going to slide Matteo to my ninth spot. I, I agree. I think he's going to be consistent. I don't think he's going to win this year. Um, mm. But I, I think he'll be good enough to be in that, that top ten. My final player is Colbert Allen. My final guy for my top ten is Anthony Barella. So who's your biggest snub? Adam Hammond is a snub. Cole Rodolin's a snub. I would say Rodolin's probably your biggest um, snub. I'm also Cole Rodolin's number one fan. So yeah, it, I it, think as far as here's the thing, there's so many good players that you you could go down a list and like you could argue Paul McBeth has a good argument for it. Yeah. Chris Dickerson has a good argument for it. It's true. Um, I'm sure we're thinking we're missing James Proctor has a very good Proctor argument. Proctor is for a it. very good argument. Um, for there. but he doesn't really win though. The like where disc golf is right now. There's also like Aaron Gossage, snub off. I thought about list. it. Thought about it. Um, where disc golf is right now, there's Bradley 20 Williams. guys He's that like could number easily. Nine right now in the world. There's like 20 guys that could easily get into this top 10, maybe even 30. Um, yeah, 25 to 30 probably in that range. And so, I think, I feel like we'll be at the end of the year confident, like top three or four guys in the world. I think below that, it's going to be just like everyone has an argument. 
Yeah. It's gonna, I think it's going to be a very competitive, fun season. I think so. Um, FPO, we ended last year with Kristen, Own, Holland, Missy, Haley. <laughs> don't know if I had to do a thing to that. I think I like that. The only thing I don't know, but I'm not going to predict anything different, is Paige Pierce. Yeah. Big question I, mark I, on Paige. When I thought mine through, if I actually had to predict it, I would probably say Kristen, Missy, Own, Haley, Paige. I'm, I think I bump, bump out Holland, and I think I would slide Paige in because I do think that Paige is going to win a couple times. I, I'm very interested to see what happens with Haley King this year because Haley King could have... I think she'll have a good season. Talent-wise, she could be phenomenal. We're not going to do this again. <laughs> she could be. So like, that's just year. where, like... I think she was good last she year. She was good. I'm just saying yeah. she could. She has the talent to charge Chris, Kristen. She has the talent to dethrone Kristen. She could become mm-hmm. the king, if you will. Haley King. Yeah. Uh, Will it happen? I don't know. Yeah. We also, Kristen Tatar, a lot of fanfare this offseason. A yeah, lot she, of new sponsorships, a lot of new <laughs> trips, a lot of spa trips. I'm not willing to jump on that train. Until she, she could come out flat. If she loses like the first three events and like isn't playing well, then I'll jump on that train. But I'm not on then, that train. I won't do it. It's just a storyline. It's just a just a storyline. It's, it's, it's brewing. Yeah. Now, I will say a lot of her stuff has been like focused on recovery and stuff, which would, <laughs> which would allude to the fact that she's doing something to recover from. Does which Kristen would allude to the fact that she's like, where definitely. Do I, where do I sign up for deals? that gig? Like, goodness gracious, man. Yeah, but she's every Estonian company is all over her Instagram. Page. Yeah. And good for her. Yeah, that's, it's that's awesome. incredible. That's she's awesome. probably like her and Paul are by far like the two most like pro athletes we've ever had. And, I would agree. And she probably, she, like, when you consider, like, pound for pound what she is in Estonia to them, like, that's probably the most significant thing we've ever seen as far as an athlete's influence over, over their Earth. following and country. Yeah. So. Oh, pretty cool. Very exciting. All kicks off this week. To wrap up the show, we got the Silas Select. I almost forgot. Silas went out there, picked a disc. It's in this box. If we guess it, we uh, get the bragging rights. Connor's going to murder us if we guess it right. There's no way he's going to ever believe us. What are you guessing? He's so contentious. Give me a prodigy PA two. I want a rock. I want an end of a rock. Rock, just just the rock, not the rock, rock three. Not a rock okay, three. Okay, gotta rock. clarify. Ah, oh, it's a time, time lapse. lapse. Wow, Whoa. I didn't know this was out there. Didn't know we had these out there. Salas, man, he's so good at he's this. Good. I, 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 I love select. the idea that we're always like, dude, Salas is so good at this when he has like literally almost no chance. He probably of losing. just walks out, doesn't put any thought, just <laughs> no. grabs the disc. No. Oh, man, like the time lapse. It was right there for the day, man. Right. Wasn't on my mind. Great disc though. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week over on the Grip Lock channel. If you're not We're subscribed, not go be subscribe. Here. Um, and you know what? Next week's going to be an exciting week. Also, return to debate night Wednesday. Is that one's posting? Thursday. 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 I, Wednesdays. I don't care. We're not recording. We're filming it tomorrow. Days. Yeah. <laughs> it comes out Wednesday or Thursday. Return to debate night. Exciting stuff. It's back. It's back, baby. We'll see you next week. <laughs>